do feel the Lord has something to say to us in this place this morning and uh, I'm so excited about what God has already done and what he's going to do, amen? We're not mm -hmm. finished yet. Above and beyond, above and beyond, all we can ask, think and imagine. Amen. What have you got in your heart this morning that you need God to do for you? Maybe you're struggling with addiction in this place this morning. And you need a bit of freedom. Maybe you're looking at your life and you're in a bundle of depression and hopelessness and you can't see any further than your nose. And you're asking yourself this morning, can God do this for me? Maybe your body is wrecked with sickness in this place this morning. And you're asking yourself, can Jesus truly do this for me? Can he truly heal me? Can this man called Jesus that lived 2,000 years ago, can he have any effect on my life today? Maybe you're asking yourself that question. I'm just going to ask you one thing. Look to your neighbour and see what Jesus has done in their lives. <clears throat> Amen. He says he's no respecter of people. What he's done for one, he will do for the other. Amen. So, Father God, I just come before you. Lord, I just give you everyone in this room today. And Lord, you said that you are the, only, you are the one that, that opens up our hearts and our minds that we can understand your word. And Father God, I pray that your word that's spoken here today will go deep. Divine bone and marrow. Flesh and spirit, Lord God. I ask you, Lord Jesus, for every need in this place today, Father God. Lord, I believe at the cross of Calvary that need was met. And Lord, I just ask you, Father God, as we go through your word, Lord, that you would just reveal it to each and every one of us, the extent of your love for each and every one of us in this place. And the extent of your grace in each and every one of our lives at this moment in time. And I ask of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. If you have a Bible, uh, which is this morning, I'm reading from uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. It's an amazing three piece of scripture, so it's going to be up there. And uh, I've entitled this message. The way of power. Who wants power in their life? Yes, yes. Yeah, come on. We all need a bit of power, don't we? <laughs> I like a bit of power. I don't like being depressed. I don't like being all of that, do you? I want power. Resurrection power. I want life, do you? Come on, you see. I want life. I want to be in the heavens. I want to be praising God. I want to be walking out with freedom. I want to be living with a cause in my life. I want to have a hope. I want to have a future. That's what I want. I don't know about you. <laughs> so, so this is what it says in 1 Corinthians 12. And it's only the heading of this. The way of power. Why? And this is what it says at the beginning of this part, part of the scripture. It says, And now I will show you the most excellent way. So God is saying, there we want this power. You have to say, yeah, I could do a bit of power on my life. And now God is saying to you, now we're going to show you how to get that power in your life. Amen. And not just a power, but an excellent power. A dynamic power. A supernatural power. See, Jesus is the same yesterday. I'm going to get excited about this. If I fall over, just leave me on the floor. <laughs> Honestly. So this is what it says. If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom the mysteries and knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love. So if you have all of that, Move 
Jesus' confirmation. <laughs> so if we can do all of them, I can speak and sing with the angels and look so good up there worshipping God, but I don't have love, I have nothing. Now I will show you the most excellent way. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries of this world, if I give all that I possess to the poor and give my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, have nothing. This is what it says. Love is patient. It says love is kind. It says it does not envy. It says it does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not rude. It does not dishonor others. It is not self seeking. It is not easily angered. It says it keeps no record of wrongs. Love hasn't got a little closet in the room where everybody that said something to me, everything that had been done on me, is just shut up there. And maybe Monday I'll take a bit of this, or Tuesday I'll have a little bit of that. And it says it keeps no records of wrongs. You're not going to get this, Jimmy, because I only run it up and down. I know. Minute. <laughs> but do we get this? Like we're talking about love here, and I'm talking about real love. I'm not talking about touchy feely love or. I can be a Christian for a day on a Sunday love. I'm talking about love. Supernatural love. How many of us, if I was to ask that question personally, fall short on all of this? It is not ruined. It really got me. It is not ruined. Do you know what that means, not to be ruined? It means that I can see the best in, in everybody. I'm never too busy to listen to somebody. I don't just push somebody off when they're making me head. It is not ruined. This law, the most excellent way, the way of supernatural power. It says love does not delight in evil. It doesn't delight in the evil. It doesn't love and uh, laugh and have to crack when you see somebody stumble and fall. Every person that you see, you want the best for. I want the best for you. I want you to be a better preacher, a better teacher, a better Sunday school teacher. I want you to be a better worshipper than I am. This is the love we're talking about here. Amen. It says, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the fruit. It says, it always protects. This is the love we're talking about. Always protects. I'm not going to have anybody say that on the bench. I want to protect you. When you fall into that little sin, I want to uphold you. I want to cover you over. Because the Bible says, love covers over multitudes. Of sin. It rejoices with the truth. It says it always trusts. These are hard things for us. I found a lot of us coming from the, the backgrounds that we have come from. But you have to get this pair of scripture. You have to get what God, it's God, it's not Paul. He's writing it out to the truth, but it's God, it's not that to you. And he says, I see your heart. And I know your desire is to follow me and to walk with me. But I want to teach you the way to do that in excellence. I'm going to show you how to do that with excellence. Love. Love. Supernatural love. Amen. Agape love. It says love never fails. 
It says, but where there were prophecies, they will cease. Where there were tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, will pass. You know, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything if you haven't got love. It says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness come, what is part disappears. When I was a child, listen to this. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I went on like a child. I reasoned as a child. But now that I'm a man or a woman, I need to think. Now that I'm a born again believer in Christ Jesus, I need to think the way he thinks. The Bible says that you and I have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. The mind of Christ that says that. I'm going to bear with a hammy. You have the mind of Christ. But my Bible says that. I'm going to rejoice in the truth. My Bible says that we have it. If it says I have the mind of Christ, then I have the mind of Christ. And I can do these things. I can do these things through God. Because I have the mind of Christ. But not only do I have the mind of Christ. I have the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I have the Spirit of God. Paddy Lord. I have the Spirit of God in me. And he made me. We we'll start behaving like men, thinking like men and women. Don't be reasoning as a child. It's crazy, isn't it? Fifty years of age and you're acting like a kid. Grow up. Take the suit eye over your mouth. Say, living as a man and a woman. It says, for we now, for now we see only reflection as in the mirror, and then we will see face to face. I only know in part at the moment, but then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. But these three things still remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest one is love. Amen. It says, God is love. How can you say you love your brother? Or you love God and hate your brother? How can you do that? Not the mind of Christ. It's not thinking the way he thinks. So I do this all out when I'm preaching at home. I've done this early this morning and I was walking out yesterday and I was exhausted. And I'm saying, Lord, I can't do this today, man. I'm exhausted. I've been jumping around like a spring chicken all the <laughs> Supernatural strength. Amen. My weakness and strength is very perfect. All I have to do is think like him. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Hallelujah. I'm here today to tell you one thing. Listen to this. If you don't have love, are you ready? If you don't have love, you've only got religion. If you don't have love, you only have religion. You can have tongues but not love. You can prophesy and not have love. And it means nothing. You only have religion. You only do what everybody else does on a Sunday. Bible says that these people, and God is talking about people here. And he says, they draw near to me with their mouths. They can give it all a Christian lingo. You know what I was thinking about this morning? Years ago when you bought a Bible, a first bit of it, writing on the front of your Bible says, the greatest verse, the greatest verse in the Bible. Am I talking too fast? No. Do you understand me? <laughs> So it says the greatest verse in the Bible was this. For God. The who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. You know, if you were to pick up a modern day Bible today, I would say the greatest verse in that, and that way most people use in this age. He will never leave me. Or he will never forsake me. 
I can live as I please. Don't have to move. He'll never leave me. But he'll never forsake me. He'll never leave me. I can do what I want. He'll never leave me. He will never forsake me. That is not the truth. That is not the truth. These people draw near to me with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me. And I've just sort of added in a little bit here just to carry on with that bit of scripture. Listen to this. It says, love does not stumble. Doesn't stumble. Always a power. Always picks up. Always picks up. <clears throat> Love does not gossip. It doesn't judge. Excuse me. It does not create for itself an exclusive clique that only certain people can join. If you're not like me, I don't want you in my fault. That's not love. Love is inclusive. It includes everybody. It includes those who are struggling. Do you know that? Sometimes in the Christian journey, you will come along people that you just need to stand beside. Hug on and love on. They can't see past that nose. And God has called you as a vessel to pour his love into that person. It says, love never tires of serving God and serving people. These two things come hand in hand. If you serve God, you will serve people. It's a natural mind of Christ, isn't it? His mind for people is love. His heart for people is salvation. He wants the best out of each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Love also hopes. Love also hopes. I have a future. I have a hope. Love is a strength. Supernatural. Love has a name. Love has a name. And his name is Jesus. Amen. You know, I got this, this this week as I was doing this. You know, Jesus looking down from that cross. Picture this. Jesus looking down from that cross did, did not give one minute to what he was going through. Did you know that? Not one toe on that cross did he give to what he was going through. For what he had been suffered and for what he was suffering. Not one minute did he give in thought to himself. He looked into the heart of the Father and this is what he says, listen, forgive them, forgive Wally, forgive Gina, forgive Paddy, forgive Danielle, for they know not what they do. Love covers over a multitude of sins. I don't know why I'm even coming to this, I'm all over the place now. Jesus loves to intercede for you and for me. He was praying on the cross. Jesus was praying on the cross. Like, imagine that. Do you forget who eaten? A loads of good. And it was supposed to be a hard man. He was in the hospital seven times of violence. It's not been a hard man. Hard man put people in hospital. <laughs> Hard man, right? <coughs> Jesus was interceding on the cross for you. And I just had this picture of Jesus hanging there on the cross, all battered, all bruised, 
lying there and dignified naked, looking up to the Father and saying, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. And I just, again, I had this thought that he could have actually put your name in there. And when he hung on that cross, he was actually thinking about you. Forgive John, because he doesn't know what he's doing. This is love, isn't it? Self-sacrifice. And you know, we think about the cross and it's become a Christian kumbaya. Where we all come around it and we all, oh yeah, nice. But the cross of Jesus Christ was not nice about it. The cross of Jesus Christ was bloody. Yeah. It was gory. There was every type of evil set upon the cross. There was no nice about it. Was it a dog chain that you hang around your neck? The cross of Jesus Christ was horrible. It was gory, full of blood, full of sin, full of wickedness. It wasn't glorious. No sacrifice is ever glorious. But what he done what he went through, he done it on the basis of love for me and you. He endured all that for you and for me. Each and every one of us that would become born again. He knew what it was to be forsaken. He knew what it was to be abandoned. I don't believe that any human mind can comprehend truly the extent of God's love shown in Jesus Christ. And you know, that's why we don't take this stuff for granted. We don't live as we please. We live to please him. Amen. I no longer live. He lives in me. I no longer live. Listen to what Romans 5 8 says. But God demonstrates his own love for us that while we were still sinners, while we were still to know God, while we were living as enemies to him. He sent Jesus Christ to die for us. Can you grasp that? No. Can you get hold of that? I can't. Something I can't get me head around. Why me? Why me? Who am I? That you are mindful of me. Lots of lovely people around here that you could save. They haven't done half the things that we've done. Boy, me. It's the extent of God's love for you. He showed you his love by sending Jesus Christ. You want to know God? If God loves you, just look to his cross. Look to Calvary. Listen to what it says in Daniel. It says, those who are warriors will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. We're not talking about a wisdom in our own strength or our own knowledge. We're talking about the wisdom of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says this, listen to this. It says the cross of Jesus Christ is foolishness. Yeah. It's foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. The foolishness of the cross is the wisdom of God. It's as simple as this. If I believe that he died for my sins, if I confess that he has died for my sins, if I accept him into my life and receive his forgiveness, I am saved. I am born again. I am going to spend eternity with him. I'm going to live in him, for him, through him and with him. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's foolishness to those who are perishing. But unto us who are being saved, it is the power Hallelujah. of God. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul says in Corinthians, listen to this. Did you ever watch uh, Faulty Towers years ago? Yeah? yeah. You know him, Emmanuel. Every time a man says to him, he says, I know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. And this is Paul talking to the churches, to the religious senate and everything else that's out there. People say, what do you know about Christian? I know Christianity. I know nothing but the cross. I know nothing but the cross of Jesus Christ. I don't know anything else. I was in college for years and I don't know God. So what do you know? Tell me about your Jesus. And what did Paul do? He pointed at the cross. He said, Paul is the worst of sinners. Filthy, dirty, wrong sinner. He was the worst of us. The cross of, of Jesus Christ was a symbol of Christian Kumbaya. It's a symbol of work completed. Amen. It is finished. It is finished. You know, I had a little clip there to play this morning, and uh, we couldn't get it up for you. But you see the passion of the Christ? I know a lot of you have probably watched it. I was watching this clip this week, and the thing about it is, you'd have to multiply that by millions. Millions upon millions, probably billions upon billions, to truly understand the extent of God's love. We see Jesus being with us. This is the cross. This is the true cross of Jesus Christ. We've seen Jesus being whipped viciously. People that are doing it to him, actually loving it and enjoying it, getting a kick out of it, smiling as they're whipping the back off him. Do you know what Jesus says about that to me and to you? Like this is what he's thinking when he is being lashed. By my stripes, you're healed. Mm -hmm. By my stripes, you are healed. This is the cross. By my stripes, and willingly endured the cross on the ancient, the extent of his love. But we don't take this grace for granted. Mm -hmm. We don't take what you've received. If you're born again of God's Spirit, if you have the mind of Christ and the love of God in your head, you don't let nobody rob that from you. Mm -hmm. so the enemy will come in and you'll try to rob mm -hmm. what God's done in your life. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The enemy will whisper in your ear and say, No, God didn't say you that for you. God doesn't deliver. God doesn't save. God doesn't heal. He done that 2,000 years ago. And he throw a scripture to, to back it up as he did with Jesus. But I'm here today to tell you this. That the cross of Jesus Christ is significant today as it was 2,000 years ago. You see, when we come to the cross of Jesus Christ, not only do we receive healing, we receive freedom. Freedom. We see, we see deliverance. We receive the light of God into our bodies. And you know what happens when the light of God comes into our bodies? Darkness has to flee. Amen. Darkness has to flee. You know the blood of Jesus running through the veins? You know what happens when that comes in? Addiction has to go out the window. Addiction has to go. The blood is pure. It's pure blood and it's flowing through these veins. Hallelujah. The torment. Anybody got the torment in the head? Hallelujah. Torment. Jesus comes into your life. The peace of God. Hallelujah. Not just normal peace. Not peace you can buy in a bottle. But the peace of God comes into your life. 
Christianity out there today. It's a, something that's bypassed. Who wants power? Who yeah. wants the power of God in our life? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Healing. Yeah. Healing. Yeah. Deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. So I always left my inheritance. Why? Yeah? That's me, you're with that. <laughs> the way we receive this. By dying. And it's way it's bypassed. Because there's no bypassing the cross of Jesus Christ. There's no bypassing. See, in order for me and for you, right, to walk in resurrection life, yeah? Hallelujah, the power of God, resurrection life. You can't resurrect unless you're killed. Unless you're put to death, unless you put yourself on the cross of Jesus Christ, you cannot walk in resurrection life. You need each and every one of us to be resurrected. He says, when I found you, you are dead in your sins, but behold, I'll make you alive. Dying to self, picking up your cross, denying yourself, and following him. And I got just thinking, it says, about that thing where going out of the town. You know when you pick up your cross and follow Jesus Christ? You don't go back to addiction. They saw it here and there. Because the addiction is dead in our life. Loneliness, depression, all these things that we have when we come to Jesus. If you come to the cross, if you die, on the cross and pick up the cross, carry it, follow him. You will live in freedom. Amen. It's the message of the cross. And you learn. It's supposed to be there with a cheerleader. He's not supposed to be on this. So good luck to that. Yeah, love and all that. I know. <laughs> Unbelievable! Praise the Lord for family. Time to end. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? We're going to end this morning. 
And I want to end at the mercy seat. The mercy seat of Christ. In a sense, is at the foot of the cross. And I'm after being talking about arrogance. And this is for each and every one of us. If none of you get up to the altar this morning, I'll tell you it's a pack of hypocrites and you need to be gone again. Because we all fall short in the stone. We all blow, we all make mistakes. And what we're going to do this morning is we're going to just come to the cross. We're going to come to the mercy seat of Christ Jesus and, and ask him to forgive us for being rude, for being arrogant, for overlooking people that probably really needed their help at the time, for being self-seeking, for being too busy. All of these things that are, are natural to you human being. Because we're not supposed to be natural. We're supposed to be supernatural. And the supernatural love of God in each and every one of us will desire to love. So we're head to bear with this morning. Hallelujah. Jesus. acted like you for the times that we haven't been like you for the times that we haven't imitated you Lord Jesus you know the sins of my heart the willful sins of my heart and Lord you says if I confess to forgive me, you will forgive me. Jesus. Jesus. Lord, you said at your cross there was healing. And Lord, Holy Spirit, I just ask you now, Lord, that you would move on every heart that needs healing in this place this morning. And Lord God, that you would restore the years that the enemy has robbed Jesus. Hallelujah. 